So you're looking for some good CPU coolers. I got you. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today, I'm gonna to be going over CPU coolers that you should be considering in 2021. Now, if you're new to the channel, you've never seen this before, it's your first time here, definitely glad to have you. I do wanna give you guys a quick little overview of what we do on this channel. Now, on this channel, we like to do tech reviews, tech news, and how to's. And with all that, I try to do my best to make sure that I don't use too much technical jargon when I am presenting information because I try to make sure that everybody can understand actually what's going on. There are some times that I will get into it, but I try to refrain from doing too much because I wanna make sure the information I'm giving can be easily understood. Not everybody has an A-plus certification or is familiar with building PCs, so I try to do my best to make it easy for everybody. So if that's something that's of interest to you or is appreciated by you, consider giving us a like, giving us a subscribe, hanging out, because I really try to help people on this channel. So with that said, we're gonna get into this. So like I said, guys, we're going to be talking about CPU coolers that you should be considering in 2021. Now, a lot of you already know there's a lot of stock issues going on and there's a lot of people trying to get into the PC market as well trying to do upgrades, whether it be CPUs, GPUs, and just overall new builds. And with that comes people that may not necessarily know what parts are gonna be good or compatible with their setup, and may not know what parts are gonna actually help them accomplish whatever it is they're trying to achieve with their build. So I'm gonna be giving some recommendations today as to what I believe are good parts and should definitely be considered. So I'm not gonna be recommending any sort of aftermarket budget coolers. And my reasoning for that is because if you're already in a position where you've got a budget you need to stick to, or you're looking for a more budget friendly setup, then it's probably better off that you just use the stock cooler that comes with your CPU. Now, in that regard, if you are using a 5000 series CPU and it didn't come with the stock cooler, I do have one on here that I believe is going to not necessarily be a budget option, but is going to still be a solid option and not too expensive. But these will be mid to high end coolers, so just keep that in mind. Now we are going to be using air and liquid coolers today, but we are going to start with our air coolers first. And I will be going from the highest to the lowest as far as performance goes. And price typically follows suit with that as well. But let's get into it. So our first cooler is going to be the Deep Cool Assassin 3 CPU cooler. This thing is massive. It's got two 140 millimeter fans that are cooling this thing with its twin tower setup and seven heat pipes. This thing, it's monstrous. And I would just go ahead and caution you if you are interested in this CPU cooler particularly, I would make sure that you definitely check out PC part picker and make sure that you're not gonna have any compatibility issues. If you're not exactly sure and you need a little bit of help here, I actually did a video kind of going over this. You can check it out up there. And this video will help you figure out if you are having any sort of compatibility issues, if this is gonna be the right cooler, or if your RAM's too tall, it'll definitely help you out and let you know if there's gonna be any potential problems with the parts that you have picked. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But this thing, as you can see, it's nickel plated covered. It is, it's massive and it looks great. I mean, this thing is a behemoth, a behemoth. And we can even, even go down here and check out some pictures just so you can, guys can get some reference as to how big this thing is. Like this thing's big. There's a good picture. It's big. So just be aware of that if that's one that you're interested in. But again, this one is going to be your best option for your air cooling solutions. So moving on to our next cooler, we're going to have the Noctua Chromax Black. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Noctua, you probably are, but typically those fans are have this ugly light brown, but they're fantastic performing. And I'm so glad that Noctua finally put out some all black stuff because I could never get those fans because I just hate how they look. I, I think they're disgusting, but some people like them. So 
Here we've got these, and this is gonna be their all black setup here. And this is gonna be a fantastic cooler as well. This is gonna be a little bit more expensive than the last one that we had, but it actually doesn't perform as good as the last one that we looked at. It's not, it's not by much, but it still does. So this one is good. It's going to be solid. Same thing as before. If you are going to go with this one, definitely check out PC Part Picker. Make sure this is going to be compatible with your build. And this shouldn't have any issue fitting on an Intel CPU or an AMD CPU, whichever one it is that you have. This one should be able to do it, should have uh, hardware in it to fit for your bracket. So that shouldn't be an issue. Definitely a solid option. So for our next cooler, we have the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, and this one is going to come in at $89. So this is going to be the actual cheapest one that we've seen so far, but this is not going to be the best performing, but don't get me wrong. This is still a very solid performer, just isn't as good as the last two that we've looked at. And this one is still just a fantastic looking cooler if that's one that you're looking for. So as you can see here, this picture here, I'll actually blow it up. You can see that this is kind of what we're talking about when you want to make sure that you check PC part picker, make sure the RAM that you are going for isn't going to have any clearance issues because you can see it's there's not much right there. Now, with that said, you can see if you've got G skill, uh, it shouldn't have any issues. Uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM shouldn't have any uh, issues, but just make sure you double check. T Force with the big wings, bat wings, not going to work. I, I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. So just double check, double check with your RAM and make sure with PC part picker that it's going to fit with yours because that's not an issue you want guys. But again, this one should work for Intel and it should work for AMD. Shouldn't be any sort of issues right there. They should have hardware to let you swap it out if you're wanting to swap it out. So for our last air, this is going to be about as budget as it gets for our air coolers. And this is another Noctua, but it is a little bit smaller. It's not a twin tower cooler like the rest of the ones that we've seen here. But it does come in at $70, so it's a little bit cheaper, about 20 bucks cheaper, which, you know, that may be viable for some people. So then that's just fine. And you're still going to get some solid cooling out of this. So definitely going to be far superior to a stock cooler. This is Noctua. They're really good. They, they know their stuff for lack of a better explanation. They know their stuff. You're going to be good with this. So now we'll be moving on to the AIOs or the liquid coolers for our CPUs here. And one thing to just kind of keep in mind here with the air cools, there's nothing wrong with them at all. They're going to have a better value per dollar versus these liquid coolers. The liquid coolers are going to be much more expensive and the performance of them is going to cost more if you're trying to be on par with the air cooling. Now, that's not to say that you can't get better thermals and there's different different situations where you would probably benefit from a uh, liquid cooled versus air cooled here, such as if you were not wanting to have uh, as loud of a system, typically radiators are, are a little bit more quiet than the typical air cooling solutions because they're having to constantly just spin that fan to keep the system, the CPU cooled versus where the liquid cooler really doesn't have to do that. It has its pump going and it's cycling that water through and going through the fins. And you know, the ramp, the fans don't have to ramp up as high as often to keep that system as cool. One other thing to consider if you are leaning towards an AIO liquid cooling solution is they have about a three year life. Once they get to a certain point, they begin to start to permeate or evaporate the liquid inside of them and they no longer become effective. So just understand that if you do get these things that you are either going to actually have to fill up the liquid cooling inside them if it's possible for you to do that with your unit or you're going to have to be replacing it so they do have about a three-year life now that in contrast an air cooling solution usually just it lasts as long as the fan does so it could be up to 10 years that it's good so just keep that in mind when you are talking about you know the entire value of things so i wanted to give you guys that information 
So before I start showing you guys AIOs, I do want to quickly explain the different sizes and options that we're going to see in them. And there's going to be about six different options, six different sizes. And real quick here, we're going to see this first one is going to be a 120 or a 140 millimeter. This is simply just going to mean the size of fan that's going to be mounted to the radiator. And if we move on to the second one, it's going to be a 240 and a 280. So it's going to have two 120s or it's going to have two 140s on the radiator here now the 280 is going to actually have the better performance bigger fans out of here this doesn't mean we're going to get twice the performance from our previous sizes here but it is doing still going to give a substantial amount of cooling here it's going to be a good one to go with and you will see the 2080 uh in a lot of different builds here that's what i typically see mine has this next one here being the 360 millimeter and this is a big chunky boy it cools really good for me and the even bigger one is going to be the 420 and that thing's just a monster so if you're looking for the ultimate solution cooling 420 is going to get you there if you can fit in your case which make sure any of these aios you check pc part picker and make sure it's going to be compatible with your case please 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 do that for our first cooler here, we have the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. Now this is going to be your best option for AIOs here today. This brand does really, really good with their AIOs and they give the best performance. And they really don't cost as much as the other AIOs that you're gonna see here, which is good to see because they're performing better and they don't cost as much, which isn't typically something you see with buying anything. So. In this case, this is a really good choice. If you are wanting to go with the 360 or you want to go with the 420, they have those options there for you. Really solid option with this one. Now for our next one, we have the EK 360 millimeter here, and they also do have the uh, 240 if you're wanting to go with that, or even the 120 if you have a small form factor. Now this is gonna have some RGB on it that I believe is addressable RGB. Let me make sure on that. Yeah, so the RGB on this is addressable and the cooling on this is still very good. It doesn't fall too far behind the Arctic and you get lights. So, you know, you can't be mad at that. So if you want the RGB thing, EK does really good. They're usually known for their liquid cooling solutions and this is a solid one as well. So for our next cooler here, we have the Kraken Z63. Now this is a awesome cooler. I actually have this in my wife's PC and you can customize this thing to really make it be a picture or a GIF of anything. It's really cool. I love this thing. And if you wanted the bigger one, they have the Z73 it, and that's going to be your 360 millimeter one. And you can customize that as well. If you have the system for it, I, I love this thing. And as far as the cooling goes, uh, it's really close to the EK. It's not far behind. It does really good still just the same. And then you get all the added cool benefits as well. So if you see a size that you want, whether it be the 2080 or the 240 or the 360, you know, this is a solid one and it works really good. So just keep that in mind. So for our next one, we have the ID cooling zoom flow. Now for this one, it is going to offer substantial cooling. It will get the job done and you'll be able to change this RGB on this thing. You'll be able to change it whatever color you'd like. But what I would say is if you were going to be doing any overclocking, I do not recommend the 240 of this. If you're going to be doing any and your case actually fits it, I think the 360 will be suitable for that. My personal opinion, I guess, is if you're going to be doing any overclocking, I think that you should have the best cooling solutions that you can get because if you overclock, then you get into a position where you're thermal throttling. And then what did you overclock for anyway, if you're just going to throttle? But that's my opinion. So also you can pick this up in white. If you were trying to go for a white build, it's not typically something you see is pretty rare. So, and it looks good. So, and again, you can change the RGB on this one and I'll have all the links in the description for this as well. So you're more than welcome to check them out. So for our last option here on the AIO front, we have the Cooler Master Master Liquid. Now this is gonna give you just as good a cooling as our previous AIO did, and you'll also be able to control the lighting on this as well. You can change the RGB to whatever you like. 
but it is coming in at the cheapest price coming in at 799 now again i would not i would not overclock on this thing this just doesn't doesn't make too much sense to me if you're going to be doing that go with a better cooling solution that only makes sense at least in my head i suppose but links will be in the description if you want to check these out so guys, I hope this video was helpful in helping you guys select the right CPU cooler for you guys here in 2021. Definitely remember guys, double check. Look at PCPartPicker.com. Make sure you don't get something that's not going to be compatible with what you have or your existing setup or your new build. Double check. Put all your parts in there. Make sure it's right. You don't have to buy anything on there. It's a completely free service. It just tells you if there's potentially any compatibility issues with your setup. It's great information. It's a great tool. I definitely use it anytime I'm going to be doing some new build. I'm not sure about something. I use it and I suggest you use it too. It's a great tool. If you did get any value out of this video, I ask you to consider giving the video a like. I definitely do my best to try to help out and it's an absolutely free way to help support the channel and help me continue to grow. So I would definitely appreciate it if you consider giving the video a like, subscribing. It does wonders for my channel. It really does. That's going to do it for the video. As always, if you do have any questions, concerns, confusions, whatever it may be, don't hesitate. Ask. I don't mind helping. With that said, I hope you can like. I hope you can subscribe. And if not, well, I hope to catch you in another one. And remember, it's a vibe. A tech vibe. Specifically. We'll see you.